three times a day. I just happened to be talking to Julie and Barbary, and she brought it brought up that we have sex twice a day. And I said, well, actually, today was uh, three times. But the first one, I don't know about you guys, but what happens at around 4, 4.30 in the morning? I, I'm not even awake for that one. <laughs> and then somewhere around 8 o'clock, there he is again. I don't know, he's just... Um, He's been on hormones for over 20 years uh, because of all the books that, I don't know if you know, but I've written 27 books, so many of them health and hormones. And what I'm really trying to tell my constituency is that I may be in my 70s now, and I always thought when I got in this decade that it would be over, and I just want people to know it ain't over if you know how to take care of yourself because aging is about worn out parts. So your hormones start working, uh, declining, your nutrients start declining, your minerals start declining. So what I write about in my books is how to put it all back together again. And our kids are raised. Um, we paid for the weddings. We paid for the education. And it's now just me and Al. And, um, God, we are having a great time. Yes, we have a lot of sex because uh, we're in balance, but also... I have seven drinks a week, too. At every, 5 o'clock every night, we have a tequila. And maybe that's why we have so much sex. I don't know. <laughs> so I have to ask you, because, you know, uh, I admire that. I really do. And I, I've always kept it really 100, just like you do, uh, Suzanne. You know, after having two kids, and I still have a one-year-old, I have a one-year-old and a four-year-old, I definitely lost my mojo. And I need yeah. to pick my mojo so what advice would you give to myself and other women out there who want that's to, a great question we, i mean come on i mean i i want some help i want to live like suzanne maybe not three times a day but how many <laughs> times a day are you really doing it um but if you have if you have little kids you don't want to do it three times a day I, you know so often there's so many women after they have their second baby that there's a nerve that gets cut in delivery that doctors forget to mention and it stops the flow of progesterone. It's the ratio of estrogen to progesterone that gives you your mojo. And you don't, if you're not in the mood or feeling it, um, you don't have the tools right now. And it would be simply rectified. I don't give advice, but if it were me and I were you, I would go to a qualified doctor. And, and on my website, you can get the names of the doctors that um, specialize in bioidentical hormone replacement. And it's a simple fix. It's just put you back on a progesterone cream short term until it all comes back. Mm, I mean, okay. That's better than, you know, a lot of crazy things. There's also a, there's a whole new world of peptides. And um, I think that's where my next book is going to go because there's a peptide. Write this down. It's called PT Peptide 141. And that's um, for, uh, you know, uh, it, it making you hornier. I don't know oh, what else to work. Okay. Look, uh, I'm uh, going to go get some peptide Suzanne, 141. How is it? Well, it's a tequila. That's that's what I'm bringing up right now. Suzanne, uh, uh, I actually, uh, that, you know, I don't know if you know, I was the host that was going to take the offer in uh, the the supplements that you have there. I was going to do your shake for 30 days. Uh -huh. I'm saying that that offer still stands. I'm saying this on oh. TV. So I, I, I'm interested in this. And I also, you know, I, I feel like obviously your comments about having sex two or three times a day, that sparked a discussion that we're having now. It sparked Sam to say, hey, I want to get my mojo back. So this is this is leading to good things. I want to know from a man's point of view, because I have a lot, a lot of my homeboys that we, they kind of left their 20s and then they kind of instantly turned into their 80s. They just kind of like to sit around. They're not, they don't feel as motivated. They don't want to get out. They don't want to have as much sex with the wife or their partner. And I want to know, what is the mindset that you should have before even you start with the physical things in terms of regaining some of that mojo like Sam's talking about? And here comes Alan. 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 Oh, he's going to show. Yes. Wait, oh. wait, do you want to have sex okay. with him twice a day? <laughs> <laughs> Look who I'm sleeping with. <laughs> yes. Wow. Alan, first of all, I didn't know that we could do this interview with sunglasses, so I feel like you blindsided us, because I would have worn mine, too. <laughs> you look amazing. I want to see one more button off that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of you know this, but Alan was the Johnny Carson of Canada. <gasps> and when wow. I, I met him, he was so famous up there that I was surprised when he asked me out. Uh, years later, I think you were darn lucky. <laughs> and that's why she slept with me on the first day. I did. Yeah. I did. I love that you guys talk about that. I've always said, as it, it, honestly, people have these weird rules like I don't sleep with people on the first date. I don't do this. It's like when it's 
It's right, it's right, and here you guys are, what, 54 years later, so you guys were right. So I like, let's get rid of that myth. If it feels right that night, let's handle that. I did, I did, at that, my first date with him, I did everything my mother told me not to do. I was 20 years old, and I thought I may never get another chance. So I had my first pot brownie. It's the first time I ever went to a man's hotel room, and it's the first time I ever slept with a man on the first date. And But we're here it's all these years later. I just knew. I knew he was the one. You know, that's that lucky thing, that chemistry thing. What is it? Yeah. If you believe in past lives, or maybe we knew each other in another life. But I just knew. Yeah, it took me two days to feel this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you guys still feel yeah. yeah. My first reaction, love, it was lust. <laughs> but two days later, it was like, well, this is really important. I don't know what it is, but I've never felt this before. Okay. This is something I want to pursue. Isn't that great? Don't, yeah. you, can I t don't you guys yeah. get tired of each other a little bit? <laughs> Isn't that something? You know, we're business part. We're, we're lovers, friends, companions, business partners. And I, I honestly, I know this sounds weird, but I miss him when he's in the other room. So <laughs> that's that's kind of. Well, I think we're, we're. It's magically lucky. It really oh. is. And, we do these three Facebook live shows a week, and he com comes in and out like this. And a woman came up to me in a restaurant the other night, and she said, I'm sorry to bother you. I said, no, it's great. And she said, I love your love. I watch you and Alan, and it shows me the possibilities of what can be. And I think, well, that's that's great publicity to put out. I'd rather put that out than negative stuff. Amen. Can I talk You're about giving me all the inspiration. Now, speaking of which, and speaking of uh, partnerships, talk to us about your product, Gut Renew. You told us yeah. this helps with overall health, but also sexual health. Is that right? Well, uh, you know, uh, a number of years ago, we had this. Oh, yeah. Yes, I here. And we stopped counting after over 10 million were sold. This here, I don't know about you, but everybody I talk to on Facebook, of my entire constituency, of which it's vast, all complain about bloating, constipation, gas, problems with their stomach. And I had that last year. So we developed with a qualified scientists and put all this stuff in this bag here that you make a smoothie every day. Because when the chemicals, you know, we're under the greatest environmental assault in the history of humanity right now, through skin care, through the food we eat. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to spray poison and pesticides on our food. The air we breathe, it's, it's really hard. And gut problems is a epidemic, and the, there's a gut-brain connection. And I don't know, you're going to find this with your kids, because you're all uh, raising young kids. You're going to hear about initials, I call them, ADD, yep. ADHD, OCD. Uh, dyslexia, dyspraxia, and then as you get older, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's. Why are there so many brain issues? When the chemicals get in your GI tract, this is stuff I write about. Who thought Chrissy Snow would be doing this? <laughs> you know, life is a journey you can't plan, but the chemicals get inside your GI tract. The GI tract is the length of a, of a tennis court, and it eats little holes in the barrier wall called leaks, and that's how you get something called leaky gut, which you've probably heard of. Once those those bad guys are in your bloodstream leaking out, they, they go on a rampage for your uh, fattiest organs and glands, and guess what? The brain is the fattiest, so they make their way up there. When the chemicals get into the brain, the brain itself, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and pineal, have to shrink to make room for the chemicals. The more chemicals that come in, the more the brain shrinks. So now, I'm not a I to cut you off. We have to go. But this means I oh. hope we can talk to you more because I'm it's literally taking that. notes as you speak. You are a yeah. wealth of information. We appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you, Suzanne. And I'm still down with the challenge. You need to. Okay, I want you to, and I'll come 30 back. 30 days. Yes. Yeah, you'll come back. 30, 30 days. 30 days. We are going to reconnect with you and also hear from Al. We yes. appreciate you. And next, we are Thank talking... You live with Mike Epps.